looking at the site in terms of choosing a site is not just about taking the sample for the for the biology it's about your health and safety one of the things that you need on site before you go anywhere is the right protective equipment you should always have a self-inflating life jacket some sort of protective gloves and the reason for that with the gloves and making sure you've got no open cuts you cover with plasters with waterproof plasters is the fact that around the bank side sometimes in the river on stones and things there will have been rats there were things like rat urine lying around this carries Viles disease a particularly horrible disease should anyone contract it you've got to protect yourself against these things so personal protective equipment is part of the health and safety message the big one is that wherever you are you work with a bank person there are obvious dangers from working alone if anything happens to you nobody's going to know equally when you're working with a bank person it's important you let um, your own personnel know where you are that day, where you're sampling, what times you're sampling, in case anything happens to the pair of you driving around between sites. Where you're working is important. For example, never choose sites that are upstream of large weirs. There are obvious dangers there. If the river is too deep, if it's above waist height, then it's A, going to be very difficult to take the sample, but B, it's dangerous. You know, we now have a massive problem in this country with invasive species. Things like the killer shrimp, the demon shrimp, signal crayfish they carry the plague that's obviously wiping out a lot of our native species so some basic biosecurity um, things that need to be in place when you go to a site it's important to make sure your gear has been uh, disinfected now you can do that in different ways uh, from the point of view of signal crayfish plague you can spray with vercon and leave for a period of time wash off safely away from the riverbank good practice is to leave all your gear to dry for three or four days in the sun that will protect you from a lot of things, not just the signal crayfish plague, it will protect you from carrying around things like demon shrimp, which will live for several days on your waders out of water. If you have the luxury um, of a spare chest freezer, freeze your gear for two or three days. That will also kill off all the sort of diseases that we're talking about. So there's some little things to think about before we actually get round to the stage of taking the sample. Just talking about quickly about the kit that you need while you're sampling. We've got a notebook and pencil. We've got a waterproof stopwatch, which you're going to need for the actual timing of the sampling. We've got a submersible camera, protective gear like the gloves, which you're going to need. This is a standard sample net fitted with a slightly larger bag, minimum 0.5 mesh, available from EFE nets, and you will be able to obtain the standard net that's used throughout the country by regulatory authorities, commercial bodies, Riverfly Partnership, whatever. We've also got uh, a sample bucket, which is uh, labelled with the river, date, time of sampling and site details. Right, well we finally got to the good and the interesting bit, which is actually taking the sample. And the first bit I'm going to deal with is taking the three minute uh, sample. So you've got three minutes of time of actual sampling that you've got to proportion amongst this section of the river. Now, to do this, I'm going to simplify it and say that we're dealing with 12 15 second samples, so we've got 12 samples to play with across this area. How do we proportion that? Looking at the river, looking all around me as I have from the bank, we've got about 40% open gravels. By that I mean gravel, um, sand, pebbles, that kind of thing. That's a habitat in its own right, so I'm going to take one at each of the margins, so that leaves us 10 samples to play with. So I'm going to take four in the gravels and I'm going to take six across the different types of submerged plants that you can actually see here and that's how we're going to proportion the sample. We've talked about the three minute kick sweep sample um, I'm just going to touch on the one minute hand search which is the other component of the overall sampling and um, for that we're going to sample habitat that we're not sampling within the three minute kick sweep sample and we're looking at things like any woody debris that's in the river uh, particularly on northern rivers we'll be looking at things like tree root which again isn't included in that sort of sampling we're looking at um, any large material that might be in the river. Some, heaven forbid, industrial rivers might have tyres, but they are a habitat, and it's the sort of thing you'd be interested in looking at. And again, any of the large boulders, you're going to have to actually hand scrape those into the net. They're all part of your one minute hand search within this environment. The actual sample itself, or the actual kick sweep part of it, is relatively straightforward. You put the net in downstream of where you're going to be kicking, you make sure that the uh, base of the net is flat to the riverbed, in this case flat to the pebbles gravels that we're taking this component of the section. Have your bank person ready, 
because you need to tell him when you're going to start and when you're going to stop your sample, he's timing it for you. What I'm doing is moving my foot out of the way, so I'm trying not to direct any of that material I've kicked around the edges of the net and away from the net. Uh, my preference is to actually use my toe to actually dig into the substrate. So I'm disturbing all those pebbles and gravels at the surface and some of the subsurface material to get all the wee beasties. Good practice sometimes is to move your foot out of the way, not to one side or the other. It just allows that material to go into the net. You're not actually pushing it around the edges of the net. I'm sampling down roughly to a depth of about five centimetres, basically toe sort of depth that you can get into. We've got a 15 second uh, kick sweep sample from uh, gravel areas. At this point, it, some of you might be wondering how often do I actually need to go and put this sample into the sample bucket. Um, it's good advice with this sort of amount of material to go and empty this in, into the bucket. I think the Environment Agency uh, recommends no more than one minute's worth of sample before you do empty it. The advantage we have by using these longer and deeper nets is that they're less prone to that sort of issue. So you can probably sample a wee bit longer. You know, you might get away with uh, taking five subsamples in here before you need to go and empty it into the bucket. Okay, well if you recall at the start of proportioning the different habitats, we talked about taking six samples um, amongst and in the different types of weeds that uh, submerge in the river. This section across here roughly has about 50% uh, water crowfoot that you can see in front of me and 50% water parsnip which we'll come into. So that's six, I'll try and proportion it three amongst each type of habitat. So. Good idea to take uh, the same sort of kick sample you've just been doing underneath at the back end. Why do we do that? The back end of these water plant stands, you'll often get a lot of fine silt collecting. And it's areas like this that you'll find things like the mayfly, ephemera danica. If you didn't sample these areas or the edges, they wouldn't be proportionally present in your sample. I'm just kicking underneath the water crowfoot at this stage. At the back end, that'll give me a sample of the sediment that's at the back end of this water crowfoot. Now for the rest of this 15 second, I'm going to actually sample through the water crowfoot. And this is really where the sweep technique comes in. You want to sweep the net through. You're trying to dislodge all the animals that are actually living amongst this water crowfoot. You can use your hands to actually get your fingers in right amongst there. Dislodge the animals from the water crowfoot or whatever weed it is you're dealing with at the time. There you go. So that's your sample amongst the water crowfoot. We're going to repeat the same thing uh, three times across the river and we're going to repeat the same thing at different points using uh, the water parsnip. Got some emergent sedges. Uh, you could equally have emergent bulrush, you could have yellow iris. The principles are the same. For the sweet part of this um, sample, it's very similar to what we were doing with the submerged plants. We get in at the base, we make sure we've got the net open with flow through and we actually have a dig around within the base of these plants. I'm just kicking again into the sediment, same as we were doing before, about a foot or two foot upstream of the net, trying not to move my foot too often out of the way of the net, so all that the sediment's being disturbed into the net with all the wee beasts that are in it at the edge. Right, we've moved on to the one minute hand search um, component of the sampling and for that we were talking earlier about the sorts of things that we would include in that and it might include um, hand searches of tree root at the edges, we don't have any in this particular habitat here, but it would include anything like woody debris in the river and I've just spotted um, a log down here that's been in the river for some time so I'm just going to get that, here we go, right here we go. Right, now this has been in the river quite some time, it's got quite a few caddis pupae on it which in this terms of the sampling we're not, we're not that interested in but it's actually got one or two little galleries here tiny little tubes that will contain caseless caddis and they are important that we get those in the sample so I'm just going to wash those into the net so that's fairly typical of the sort of material you're looking at for woody debris the other types of um, material in the one minute hand search are the larger boulders and rocks that you can't sample by kick sampling. And in fact we've got quite a large boulder down here. So I'm just going to get that out, put that in front of the net so I don't lose anything. And again, just carefully rub your hands around, dislodging any of the wee beasties that are living on here into the net. 
So we've got our sample that you looked at earlier, we've just taken everything out of the river. <clears throat> what we have here is a um, 0.5 mil mesh, same size as the net, so we're not going to lose anything that we lost earlier, uh, sieve. And all we do is very carefully sieve off the water. Obviously some beasts are going to go over and we're going to wash those back in. All right, into the sieve, like that. Make sure that's retained back in the sample. We've got 70% industrial denatured alcohol, and this will preserve it for a long period of time, and you probably get away with maybe not looking at the sample for three months in this preservative. We very carefully wash back all the wee beasties that we had on the sieve, back into our sample, just making sure we've not left anything on the sieve. There we go, that's fine. That's fine, that's nice and clean. That's good. Just a little bit of vegetation left on that. And then we have the rest of our preservative. It should be fine. There we go, I'm just going to press those down a little bit into there. Yeah, making sure the entire sample is immersed in preservative. Making sure I've left nothing on my hands. That's absolutely fine. And that's it, that sample now can be sealed in. Take it back to the laboratory. Just make sure the lid's on tight all the way around. And that's ready for analysis at the next stage in the laboratory.